You guys ready for the word? Yeah. Me too. But I'm not going to be preaching today. I'm, I'm going to step aside today. And I'm going to allow somebody to preach who has been pastoring this church as the lead pastor for 14 years, I believe. Correct? Max and Nina Myers are here. Maybe wave your hands. Uh, they, they're going to be... Uh, they're going to be introducing themselves a little bit too. But uh, Pastor Max back then, when he was leading the church during a, a time where, uh, and uh, many of you remember, there was a, a, a fantastic outpouring here. But the Holy Spirit just, just poured out just in the way that the Holy Spirit can pour out. It's something that only God can do. And uh, Pastor Max, he had the privilege of pastoring the church during this time. Um, you were now four pastors back, if I remember correctly, right? So I'm four after. <laughs> you now so it has been 13 years I believe since and you have been pastoring for 14 years and you know when uh, when I heard that he is coming now a Memorial Day weekend I said you know what I want to allow him to speak here I want to I would like to hear from him again I don't think that I've actually ever heard you preach but I we have met back then like three years ago and our hearts kind of knit together uh, we have asked them really good questions back then how was it back then what would you do different and there were some really good answers that they had so we appreciate you guys come on up I want to give yes give him a big hand Come and preach what the Holy Spirit put on your heart. <laughs> Bless you. Is your mic on? One, two, three. No. There you go. It should be on. All right. He'll come. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, man. <laughs> it's so good to be back to your faces again and be back at this special place. Um, and Pastor Arnold, I just really like you. I do. Um, I do. There, as, he, as he just mentioned, I do believe God has been knitting our hearts together and doing something unique between us, and, and um, I'm grateful. So this morning, oh my, Lily, bless you, young lady. What? Oh. Uh, <laughs> the... The whole, I, I know that Freddie and Shanta used to talk about much and hutch all the time. And then to see this phrase used the way that you're using it and what you're doing, um, I'm, I'm just blessed. Blessed and encouraged. Um, yay. Yeah. Isn't God awesome? He is, he is, has been, he always will be. Thank you, Linda. Yeah. Um, before I, I really get into what God's put on my heart for you this morning, many of you uh, have not met me and don't know me, and so hello. And I introduce you to my wife, Nina, who been, is sitting here with. If you are, yeah, please. Side by side, 47 years. 46 years. <laughs> I should have asked before I came up. <laughs> Math is not my strong place. <laughs> We've been through it all together. And uh, for those of you, uh, our, her, our first probably seven years or so, she was an RN and uh, commuted to the Waconia Hospital, Ridgeview. Um, was kind of, and worked over there and made all those um, uh, blizzard drives between here and there and made me many memories I keep hearing about every now and then. And then, um, and then, about in, in 2000, then uh, if you were around Hutch, then Nina opened Coffee Company. Yes. And you ran it for the six years here before we left. And, and so that, that may be how you might know my wife if you were around at that point in time. All right. Um, on the f flight here, I, I had an oh no moment and, uh, and uh, a gasp moment when I realized that I left my Bible laying on the uh, end table in our, in our living room. But fortunately, I had my iPad, and the notes had been downloaded into my iPad. So, so for those of you that, that uh, have had a journey with me, to think about me preaching from an iPad seems very foreign. 
Uh, but I am accustomed to it, and so that's what we're doing this morning. You also know um, that I like to uh, have us repeat a phrase before we get into the Word this morning. So whatever you have in your hand that you use to read the Word in, whether you brought the Word, whether you have an iPad, you have a, a phone, whatever you use, uh, get it in your hand this morning, and then if you do this, repeat these words after me. This Word, this word will change the way I think, and I need to think differently. Yeah, and Holy Spirit, that is my prayer this morning in our hangout time together. Um, you have appointed for such a time as this. And so today, accomplish every one of your purposes. We say yes to every plan that you have to be accomplished over these moments together this morning and beyond. And so we invite your presence, we seek your presence, we declare today every ear open to hear what the Spirit would say, every eye open to see what you're wanting to show us, and every heart open today to be set free, changed, have revelation according to your purposes and plans. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. All right, here we are uh, together. I've got... Uh, five, this isn't a, a message built around one particular theme. I've got five things that the Holy Spirit began talking to me about and said, those are the things I'm to bring to you today. And so we're going to begin, we're going to kind of kind of work our way down through that journey. Uh, here's the first one. The first one is that I encourage you, challenge you, whatever word we want to use there, to embrace your possibilities. I'm challenging you today to embrace your power and your possibilities. Because if God is awesome and God is able, then the possibilities are endless when it comes to what you and I can accomplish in the things of, of the kingdom. And so there is power in the possibilities that lie before us. And I want to encourage us and set us free here at a greater level this morning to move into those areas of possibilities. Uh, so here, here's how we're going to break this down this morning. I'm, I'm going to give, want to give you a visual. Uh, Romans chapter 5, verse 12 to start with. So if you get your Bible, you get your notes there, uh, go with me to Romans chapter 5 and verse 12. Romans 5, 12 says, Therefore, just as through one man sin entered into the world, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all have sinned. Okay, so what we have Paul telling us here in Romans is that everything that we consider wrong in the world came through one man. I'm going to pick on Ron. Ron, come up and help me here this morning. Come stand with me here this morning, Ron. Okay. Nothing went wrong. Nothing went wrong. <laughs> till now. Not, not till now, that's right. Okay, so... So again, this passage, Romans uh, 5.12, says that one, through one man sin entered into the world. One more time. Through one man sin entered into the world. Oh, you repeated that. I didn't realize I was asking you to do that. Good job. Okay. So it was, we know about one man to be Adam. So for these next few moments, welcome Adam to the platform. Everything, death, Sickness, disease, all confrontations, everything that's wrong and bad in the world came into the world because of one human being like you and me. It was a human being that brought all of that into the world. Through one Matt Adam, this guy right here. Stay right there, Ron. Don't leave. We're not done with you yet there, Ron. Just heal me. Okay. But, all right, now verse, tw uh, verse 15. We're still in, in Romans chapter 5, verse 15. But the free gift is not like the transgression. For if by the transgression of the one, that's Adam, many died, much more did the grace of God and the gift of the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abound in many. Okay. Pastor Arnold, you're, you're a good one for me to pick on. Come here. Jesus. Yes, yes, just it. You just it. You've already got to figure it out. 
Come over here. Welcome, Jesus. All right. All right. So, just a few verses after the declaration of verse, of verse 12, all sin, all death came through one man, Adam. Three verses later, he says, but it all can be turned around by, well, let's go back and, and just sit, don't stay there, Pastor Ron. Okay. I says, but for if by the transgression of one, many died, much more the grace of God and the gift of grace through one man, Jesus Christ. Now stay with me just simply for a moment, because th this, you got to get this. Paul says simply this, if a man can start all of the, everything that's bad, corrupt, sickness, death, and disease, how much more can the God of the universe do? Come on, if a man can start all of this, what can Jesus do to turn it around? Is he awesome? Is he powerful? Is he present? Yes, he is. So if a human being like you and I created all of the things that we fight against, how much more can Jesus with us overcome? Come on. This is, this is, this is what I'm talking with you about this morning. The power of our possibilities. You and I have possibilities that are powerful, not because of Adam. We spend, we spend too much time talking about and thinking about the things that we have to live and endure because of Adam. It's the other way around. It's how good our God is, how powerful he is, and what he can do in us and through us. But why? Because it's possible because he's God. If he is God in us and through us, how much? why, why do we let this guy rule our lives? Why do, we, right, why do we let this guy have control over our thoughts and, over our, and how we see ourselves and how we see the world and how we portray ourselves on Facebook? How do we let this guy control all those things? It's this guy right here. If we would focus our thoughts and our attentions on the possibilities that exist within us because what Jesus has done for us, yea, God. Thank you, Pastor Arnold. Okay, Pastor, bless you on. Bless you on. Okay. All right, now, now catch it this way. Um, uh, when, before we were here, we pastored in, in uh, Wapaka, Wisconsin. We built a home uh, that we had to have 85 white pine trees moved off the lot to build the home. We left a row of, uh, in front of the house to kind of block it from the street. And one day, Nina and I were um, just living life in the house and we hear our son Jeff hollering outside and so we go out the front door and there's our son about 30 feet up on the air up in this pine tree and if you know if you think about what a white pine is it's got all these straight branches that come out and a perfect ladder you know for climbing up so he climbed up there and then realized where he was <laughs> and looked down and fear came upon him and he began shouting for his parents to come out and somehow rectify the situation, of which we did. Now, I use that illustration in the context of what I'm talking with you about right here, because I want to encourage you, when you have a dream and you have a vision and you have a possibility, and you're looking up and saying, I wonder if I could, I want to stand here this morning and tell you, go for it. Go for our son, somewhere along the line, stood on the ground and looked up there and said, I wonder if I could do that. And he did it. He climbed up, but then when he got up there, he looked down, right? And then fear, and fear came upon him. All right, so, but here's what I want to say to you in context of the power of the possibilities. If you are going to pursue your possibilities, there will be a time and a place when fear will hit you. There, things won't... Go just as smoothly and, on, and normally on the timetable that you want it to go. So somewhere along the line where you're climbing to go after the thing that you think God has called you to do or the thing that he's put in you to, to pursue and you're running after that thing, somewhere along the line you're going to realize I'm in danger here. And you're going to say to yourself, what in the world am I doing here? And the devil is going to say to you, what in the world are you doing here? And I want to say to you, whenever you get into that position, first of all, keep looking up. Because that's where your help is coming from. Amen. Secondly, I want to say to the rest of you, when, when someone is in that position, when, when someone is, 
is pursuing their dream and they're going after what they believe God has called them to do. And they find themselves in a place that they didn't predict to get themselves into. And they begin, like our son, begin hollering, like, help, help. You know, this is not the place where we say to them, what in the world do you think you're doing? <laughs> This is not the place where we say to someone who's pursuing their dreams and going after their vision and doing what God has called them to do, that we say, I knew from the beginning you should never have done this. This is not how we are supposed to walk out the body of Christ. What we do at that point in time is to, is to come alongside of them and encourage them. Amen. This is not where we blame them. This is not where we accuse them. This is not where we say, what in the world were you thinking? Now get yourself down. If someone is pursuing their dreams, do not talk them down. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> Why? Because there's power in our possibilities. And it, and it manifests itself as we pursue the possibilities that we go after. <sighs> okay, you got that? You know this morning? Okay. Um, second one. Second thing that I have on my heart to talk with you about this morning is, is, especially in this season, to pursue respecting others who are not like us. Yes. It, in this culture, what in the world has, has happened to us? Um, as, as carriers of the gospel and of Jesus Christ in us, we are called to honor and respect those that don't think like us, that don't look like us, that don't vote like us, that don't smell like us, that don't work like us, that don't believe theologically like us. There's nowhere in the Bible that we are told that we're supposed to disregard and disrespect those people. Can I get an amen? amen. Come on. There's, um, there's some rationale behind what I'm about to share with you, and, and I want you some scripture so that you get this. Um, go with me to Luke chapter 9 this morning. Luke chapter 9, and we're going to go to verse 51, and we're going to read a few verses, because this is just a fun little story here, because this is not a new thing. Being disrespectful to others is not a new thing. And, and so um, let's look at what happened to Jesus and his guys. All right, beginning at Luke 9, verse 51, it says, when the days were approaching for his ascension, he was determined to go to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers on ahead of him, and they went and entered a village of the Samaritans to make arrangements for him. But they did not receive him, because he was traveling towards Jerusalem. When his disciples James and John saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire down from heaven and consume him, consume them? Now let's just stop there for a moment. Let's just stop for a moment. Get this. His disciples that had been following him here now at, at three years plus and have been catching his heart, they want to, then are offering to Jesus that the power that he has bestowed in them, that they would use that power to kill every man, woman, and child in Samaria. Do you, do you get, th this is not a made up story. This is not a parable. This is, these are real, these are our brothers in Christ that are offering just because they're not being accepted just because they're not being received the way they think they should be received, they think there's justification in doing away with the opposition party. All right? And the, now, catch the next, what, what happens next, what Jesus says to them. But he turned and rebuked them, and he said to them, you do not know what kind of spirit you are of. For the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them, and they went into another village. Now, did you catch what, what Jesus' response? You do not know what spirit you are of. Recognizing that there is a spirit behind all of this stuff that's going on. Whenever we become dishonorable and have opinions and become argumentative and whatever it is, we become towards people who are, don't think, act, whatever, all those things we've talked about before like us, there is a spirit behind that. There, there is a work of the enemy in our hearts and our lives and in our minds that want us to, to 
uh, cause harm or separation between us and, and that, that party. Now, catch, now we're going to move. There's, there's a to be continued on this. It gets picked up in the book of Acts. So now go with me to the book of Acts. Because actually, we, the story gets picked up again in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 8. So go with me to Acts chapter 8. And uh, beginning at verse 5. And here's what it says in Acts. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and began proclaiming Christ to them. The crowds, so, all right, back to where? And where did they want to call down fire from heaven? Samaria. Samaria. All right. The crowds, with one accord, were giving attention to what was said by Philip, as they heard and saw the signs which he was performing. For in the case of many, for, for in the case of many, who had unclean spirits, they were coming out of them with a loud voice. And many who had been paralyzed and lame were healed. So there was much rejoicing in the city. Now jumping to verse 14. Go, jump with me to verse 14. Now when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God. In other words, there's an outpouring, there's a revival going on in Samaria. They sent to them Peter and John. Some of you just caught that. Who did, the, who did the apostles send to Samaria? The very guy that wanted to kill them all about a year and a half earlier. Come on, God. I love this. I love this. Nobody's unsavable. There's no wall too high or too thick that our God cannot break through. But do please recognize and understand that there's a spiritual dynamic, not just a a mental dynamic here uh, uh, about what's happening. Do you realize that Matthew 18 says, Matthew 18, 18 says, which you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and which you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Do you not comprehend with me that when we make judgments and make comments towards those that are not like us, that are negative comments, we are binding them. We are speaking a curse over them. We are holding them captive. This is a thing that bemuses me as I watch the church over over these last years, that we, we are frustrated with the disintegration of our culture, but we fail to comprehend that we are the ones that have put them where they're at. We have spoken against them and spoken against them and spoken against them and spoken against them, and then we go to try to touch them, and there's a wall between us, and we wonder why. The sad news is, I'm convinced we created that wall. And, and recognize, <laughs> um, here's what I'm, the scripture doesn't say, here's, here's what I'm convinced of. I'm convinced that when, when they wanted to call down fire from heaven, and Jesus got that from them, that Jesus at that moment spoke a blessing and a prayer over Samaria. I, because it was in them to bring down fire from heaven. I'm convinced that, that before they parted Samaria, Jesus said, I pray for Samaria. I, I set them free. I bless them to receive, you know, blah, blah. I'm, I'm sure. Because the power of blessing is the power of freedom. Amen. That's right. That's right. Amen. <sighs> yeah, come on. And so... So for the church, and Lily, I'm going to just pick on you, young lady. I love picking on you. I mean, th- th- these are keys to, to bringing the gospel and, and the kingdom into the culture. It is by loving on people. It is by affirming people. It is by caring about people. That's how these walls come down. And so, Lily, you and everybody else, and all of you, go for this. I mean, this is not just a philosophy. This is a reality. You guys are on track with a, a powerful reality. And so I, I, I bring this as an encouragement to you. Catch yourself, catch your spirit. If you catch yourself criticizing, catch yourself making comments about, oh, these people, they're going to go to hell. You know, do you think like that? You're going to go to hell. You, now let me tell you this. If, if we keep saying that about people that don't think and, and believe like, oh, you're going to go to hell. Like, if you keep saying, realize there are declarations we are making about them when we say those things. And, and so set them free. God, God bless them. God bless them. 
Oh, I, I, I got to tell you a side story. I had not planned on it, but it's rising up in my spirit. Um, some of you, like Nina and I, have had wounds um, that have come from, uh, from people, the things that people have done to you that cause you wounds. And we, we were greatly wounded when we came here. In fact, um, the church had gone through some stuff, and we had gone through some stuff, and the church was bleeding, and Nina and I were bleeding, and we said, um, how in the world is God going to work this out? And, and, but he did. Yay, God. Amen. And, and the, but the one thing that I learned, as the Holy Spirit began talking to me about it, and I, I've taught it and preached it for now for years, is the power of blessing. And, and so the Holy Spirit began talking about every time I want to do, I, I'm just going to be, I, I got nothing to lose by being transparent here this morning. Every time I wanted to, in my mind, I wanted to kick one of those guys in the crotch <laughs> for what they did to my family. For what they did to my family, the Holy Spirit said, bless them. Because I tell you, that those, the enemy was bringing those thoughts up constantly, thinking about this. And, and let me tell you, I did that for a month. Just one month, I spoke a blessing. God bless, blah, 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 and his home and his family, and may he, and blah, blah, blah. Within a month, it was gone, and I didn't even remember it anymore, and the, the whole thing, because of the power of blessing. There is, there is such an incredible, we experience it, there is such an incredible power in blessing. Yes. So Lily, keep blessing. All of you, keep blessing because that, that's where the king, listen, that's where the kingdom is. You can't take the kingdom by cursing. You can't take the kingdom by binding people and, and, and pigeonholing them and accusing them and telling them what's wrong with them and how they need to think right and etc. That's not how the kingdom is advanced. It may, not, it may seem countercultural to you, but I'm telling you the truth. The king, you already know the kingdom of God isn't rational, right? You already know that. And, and so even when I've just shared with you about blessing, it's not rational, but it works. And that's the main thing, right? We want it to work. Okay. Um, again, I'm going to... Uh, the third thing the Holy Spirit had on my heart to, to share with you is you guys are already on track. I'm just going to affirm it, but I want to give some context. And that is, you've got to give away what you have. Whatever you have, you've got to give it away. Now, I'm going to give. I'm going to read a scripture verse, and I'm going to tell you a little story. Second Corinthians nine ten. Second Corinthians nine ten says, "Now he who supplies seed to the sower, and bread for food, will supply and multiply your seed for sowing, and increase the harvest of your righteousness." So Paul says, for the for us as the church, he provides bread for us to eat, but he gives us seed to go give to others. We are seed sowers. Do you hear that? You catch this? And, and so our commission is to not worry about ourselves because he's going to provide bread for us. Our concern should be, how do I take the seed that he's given me and, and influence those around me? Now, um, I, I, we're going to do a little shifting back and forth here a little bit um, because as Pastor Arnold mentioned, one of the things that uh, totally changed my life forever and some of yours is when God showed up here. Yes. Okay. Now, we're going to give a little bit more detail a little bit later on. We'll talk about some things as they, as they apply to what I believe the Spirit is saying today to you. But I want to say this. Um, those of you that, that, that don't know, I'm, I'm not going to give any order I'm, because whatever. Let me, at the end, after people, we, for a year and a half, we had... Thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people come through here. Yes. Um, uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday night, two yeah. Sunday morning services. Yeah. We did that for a year and a half, praying for people. Mm -hmm. and, at, and all the states and all the places that people came from, um, after we were trying to figure out what normal was again, <laughs> like, who are we? <laughs> who are we now? You know, at, and trying to lead the congregation through that and trying to figure all that out. Um, one day I was in here praying, and the one thing that bothered me is that even though so much had happened out there, that I couldn't tell that anything happened in Hutchinson. I couldn't put my finger on one thing that God had was showing up here in powerful ways, but, but I couldn't tell that our city was different. 
And that really troubled me because I have a heart for the city. And this is when the Holy Spirit immediately took me to this verse. And, and I was reminded of how we walked out the outpouring here. And it wasn't just us, it was, we were connected into the Brownsville revival primarily and then later into the Toronto uh, outpouring. And, and um, let me just say to, to you this way, those of you who weren't here and et cetera, we had a good time. Yes. <laughs> I mean, when God shows up, he shows up. He shows up, yeah. Things happen. We, we had a good time. And I remember that our Friday nights, Pastor Don, he declared Friday night was party night. And I mean to tell you, we worshiped hard and, and partied on Friday nights. And, and the, the Holy Spirit began giving me a picture. I mean, we were blessed. I tell you, we and everybody who came through these doors, we were blessed. But then the, when I asked why, why did we not affect the community, the Holy Spirit took me to this passage and said, because you ate the seed. In other words, we consumed it on ourselves. We had a great time with the outpouring. We had a great time with the seed. But instead of taking what he was pouring out on us and saying, how can I go out? And I, I, this is no, nothing on the congregation. This is on me. I'm the pastor of the congregation. I never saw it. I never thought about it. It wasn't in context. I was just trying to hang on for dear life. <laughs> Personally, I mean to tell you, it, it was just a weird experience. But the Holy Spirit showed me at that point in time that we didn't affect the community because of things that he was imparting and giving to us. We were not thinking in terms of how can tomorrow, how can I make a difference in my community? And that's why I'm saying this to you today. Now you're getting some context. And this is why I keep picking on Lily here today and, and sharing this with you. That when he comes, be ready to give it away locally. When he pours into your hands, and, and, and if you think to yourself, oh, that if this ever happens here again, if, if that happens here again, I'll, I'll, I'll remember what you're saying, I'll do it then. I'm saying to you now, no, that'll be too late. Who you are, let me guarantee you, who you are going into a move of God is who you are in a move of God. And what, what your lifestyle is and, and what your priorities are and what you move into. So now is the time to establish the lifestyle of giving away what you have. Because if you give away what you have now, if you release into the community now, if you touch your neighbors now, if you mow the neighbor's yard now, if you take food to them now, if you help somebody on the job now, if you open up your wallet now, if you open up your checkbook now, then it will be natural for you to do whenever the greater comes. Don't cry, you're going to make me cry. <laughs> it's, yeah. Give it away. Um, okay, let's, let's move on. Um, here's one that actually I've, I've saved the best to almost last as far as I'm concerned. What I'm sharing with you this morning. Um, I, I encourage you to embrace the power of love. You've already heard the word a few times here this morning, and I'm going to tell you right up front that one of my regrets of my years in pastoral ministry, if I would do anything over again, I would spend way more time preaching, teaching, and focusing on love. I, um, I'm going to tell you I, um, one of those pastoral struggles on this particular topic, and I'm going to tell you why it happens. Um, I th distinctly remember, not just here, but on previous two churches we'd pastored, every time I tried to preach on love, and I would say, today I'm going to be talking about love, I could feel the walls come up. And I distinctly remember here uh, preaching a message on love that I got to put in my heart. And I distinctly remember standing here and I could hear in the spirit somebody out there saying, oh, I should have gone to Mall of America this morning. <laughs> you know? 
And obviously it troubled me for years. What is it about preaching and talking about love that causes such resistance to the message? And I'm going to succinctly put it this way, and then we're going to build on it. It's because it's so stinking powerful. It's because it is such a powerful truth. The enemy has deceived us in our own heads as it being a side message, a side theme, a, just, a, just another one of those topics that, flo- that fits in with all the other topics that we talk about and etc. But let me guarantee you, the word says that God is, it's who he is. So that means everything that comes out of him comes out of love. So his awesomeness, his power, his presence all comes out of And so if the enemy have us, has us convinced that love is no big deal, catch it. When, it, when love is, is just another side commentary of our lives, then it diminishes, I'm, I'm going to finish it, it diminishes his, his authority and his power in, in our lives. Now, now I, I want to take you to some scripture here this morning about this. Now, here's what happens. I'm going to, I'm going to read some verses of 1 Corinthians 13. <laughs> And this is where the rolling of the eyes goes. <laughs> Got to hear it one more time. My no. favorite <laughs> Your favorite chapter. Bless you. All right. Yeah. But in the spirit realm of our hearts and our lives, this is what happens. Oh, I know that. Oh, I've got to hear it again. What's he going to say different? Blah, blah, blah. I'm going to be told. Blah, blah. So, but this is going to be a little bit different. For, stay with me this morning, 1 Corinthians 13. Verses start at verse 1. If I speak of, with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become a noisy gong and a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and know all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. And if I give all my possessions to feed the poor, and if I surrender my body to be burned, but do not love, it profits me nothing. Now, you know those verses. Many of you have perhaps memorized those verses. You understand those verses as somewhat uncomfortable as they may be if you, you focus on them. You're aware of those verses. Now, let me, let me bring some extra context into this this morning, because what Paul is talking about in those three verses is religion. He's talking about you can, be, uh, you, can be, you can have your religion down perfectly. You can have your theology down. You can have your actions down. You can have the gifts of the Spirit down. You can prophesy. You can lay hands on people. You can tithe. You can proclaim while your body is being burned that you love Jesus. But if you don't live it in love, it doesn't matter and doesn't count. Now think about, not, I, you know, because it's one thing to go, uh, okay. No, no, you've got to get this today. You've got to get this today. The, this is what happens in the absence of love. We're capable of doing all the right things, but because it doesn't have him in it. No, we're saying, oh, you know, I'm doing it in his name. No, the word says again, God is love. So it means if we are not doing it in love, we're not doing it in God. Can I be any more logical and rational with you than that? And, that, and let me tell you, that should trouble you because it troubles me. That should trouble us. But what it is talking about here is the power of the absence of love. It's the power of the absence of love. All right, now, that there is good news. All right. Now, let me take you to the good news. Good news is in 1 Peter 4, 8. So, look with me at 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 8. It says this, Above all, keep fervent in your love for one another, because love covers a multitude of sins. Love covers a multitude of sins. This is the power of love. Love has the power to make our hearts right before God. All right, so, so let's go back and look at this. We can, listen, we can be right on our religion, but be wrong with God. 
Here's where it gets dangerous, and Nina and I have had this conversation because she's scratching her head about this one, what I'm about to tell you. We can be wrong in our religion and be right with God. That's what it says. I didn't make that up. We just read it. You can be wrong, have sin in your life, not have everything together, and because you're in love, you walk your life out in love, you are right with God. It is the power of love. One more time. I get, because again, this, if there's ever a culture that needs to grab a hold of this, it's our culture right now. One more time. You can do it all. You can do the right gymnastics. You can have your theology down. All those kinds of things. You can have great titles. You can have great authority, etc. But if it's not done in love, and, and that's, that's just the thing. We're not love judges, are we? All right, so I'm not empowering you to go around and judge people's loves this morning. Let's, let's get this, okay? I'm not, in, you know, like, oh, you're loving, or you're not, oh, you're in trouble. You know, don't. No, no, no. In the name of Jesus, no. I'm not empowering you to become love judges. It's between us and God. Sir, I said something to set Siri off. And so <laughs> I'm not sure what it was, but I had to quiet her down. Okay. I, yeah, do, are, you get, are you catching what I'm saying this morning? I, I know it's, it's more philosophical than it is concrete because love isn't all that concrete, which sometimes causes problems. But, the, but what you know, as Paul goes on, love bears all things, yes. believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things, never fails. It, that's what love is. If we're living that out, if we are under attack but we bear it, if we bless those that are standing against us and honor them, that's love. If we don't walk away from people who are not like us, then we're in love. We're walking in love. Just, it's not all that complicated. Let me see, it's the devil who wants to make it complicated. It's the devil who wants to make it complicated. You know, the, coming, back to the, coming back to where I started with the, the, the power of, of um, knowing what our possibilities are. You know, in a room like this, we're just a mess. Let me just say this. Because there's, there's a ton of lies in this room. There's just a ton of lies in this room. Lies that we believe about ourselves. Li lies about what, how we see things and etc. The, the power of the gospel, the reason you're here this morning in, the, in that God wants you to come together and sit under Pastor Arnold's ministry is, is because he wants to set you free from those lies and be walking in greater measures of truth and greater measures of freedom, which become greater measures of love. Along the, the, Are you with me here this morning? Okay, so love works. Um, my last, my last um, uh, word for you this morning is Prepare ye the way of the Lord. This, this is how I want to bring this all together this morning. Um, Mark 1, uh, 2 and 3 says, As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I send a messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one who is crying in the wilderness, Make ready the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. And you know that passage, etc. Let me, uh, let me assure you that God comes where there's a place prepared for him. Yes. But now, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold a number of what I'm about to say, things, and try to hold them in context. Um, if you haven't already figured this out, it's pretty tough to, to deal with, make deals with God. So this isn't about making deals with, this, with God. This is about having a heart for him that desires his presence. Having a heart for him that wants to, to just do, be, whatever, experience, encounter. That's, that's what we're talking about here this morning in this particular process. Um, again, again um, let, me, let me go back and talk about this and share this with you. I'm, I'm going to walk away from my notes and just see what the Holy Spirit says. Um, 25 years ago this month is when I read an article in Charisma. Ah, oh, come on. Charisma magazine. 
They said, there's a revival going on in Brownsville, Pensacola. I tore the... <sighs> tore the article out, made copies, gave it, <clears throat> gave it to the board, the board meeting. And the board said, let's go. Let's see what's happening. Fourth of July weekend, 25 years ago. We jumped in the church van, deacons and wives at that point in time, went down there, experienced it, came back, stood across here on this Sunday morning, told everybody what we saw and what God was doing. And then the rest of it became history. Um, within uh, two months, we took 80, I think, down there. Um, and most of those were youth. The board decided right up front that we want our youth to be on the front end of that. And so we took the youth down there. We paid the youth away of the church budget to go with us down to Pensacola for several days. And in October, we took 100 and some. I made, I made some trips down. And, and that ignited a, a fire here um, as we were um, had had an impartation given into us and brought that impartation back here. And um, when God shows up, it, it, things get interesting. If you've never heard the phrase, revival is messy, um, uh, then you weren't with us <laughs> whenever, um, because it is when God shows up, things get messy and things get very interesting along the way. Uh, a couple brief st stories. I remember one uh, Sunday morning I was preaching and just doing my thing. And this probably would have been maybe October or so of that year, uh, 25 years ago. And Dawn Ogren was sitting about right over here in the middle. And I'm preaching, and she puts her hand up, which people don't normally do <laughs> when the pastor's <laughs> preaching. And she said, Pastor, I just think we're all supposed to come to the altar and repent. It had nothing to do with my message. <laughs> and I'm going, it's such a deal. All right. And God just came in. Just came in, like, and he was doing it. Every, every Sunday morning, Nina and I drive down seven and going, what in the world just happened this morning? Because I was the pastor that had the order of service all put together, and it didn't take long before, to, forget that. Remember, there was another, another time, morning I was standing here, and, and this is another Ogren memory. Marty was given a testimony about how God had set him free from something, and while he's trying to give his testimony, a person sitting right over here, not a part of our church, a visitor jumped up and shouted, I'm healed. <laughs> Started running across the front. Yeah. While we're just standing, go, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know. So, um, all right. You, uh, I, I, you guys, do you have a picture? I have one picture of the outpouring. There we are. This is Sunday morning. You see the date. This would have been in 97. So I'm talking about 96. So been, this would have been 24 years ago. And um, Ed, where are you? Ed Henry? There you are, Ed. That's Ed. Ed Ed's, Ed's a really good usher. He is ushering. And um, Pastor Don at the piano and Pastor Mike and I over in the far left. Worship team on, on the right. Um, this, was, this was what a typical Sunday morning service looked like. God just dealing with us. And then, uh, yeah. It didn't look like this on our revival nights. It was way more messy. People were laying all over the floors. And uh, especially in the early, early months, and my wife, who's quite refined, the um, power of God came on her one night. We were here, and she took out two rows of chairs. Just <laughs> Seriously, her body just flew. Um, and uh, Shelly and Tracy over here, I, I, I reached out to them. They... Um, because they were living in Wilmer at the time, and they were bringing youth over from Wilmer on Friday nights. And, and uh, I, I shot uh, Shelly an email or a Facebook message last month, said, what happened to those kids that, were, were, that you were bringing over? And she said, oh, many of them called in the ministry. They're all still serving God. And uh, I, I also think of them because in those early uh, months of the outpouring, manifestations were really high, and the kids were jerking and shaking, and, and uh, so those Wilmer kids went to school after being here, <laughs> and, and, and uh, 
and the principal called the youth pastor, is that right? Because the kids were jerking and shaking in their chairs in the classroom. The power of God was still on them. Now, and our kids were having some of those same manifestations, but our principal just kind of let it go. And they didn't, they didn't, he didn't really, he didn't, didn't ask us to remove our kids from the school. It's like just stuff happened because, let me just say this, when God shows up, something's yes. going to happen. That's right. In the presence of God, you, you all have sung this chorus, that the mercy me, you know, thinking in terms of when we go to heaven, am I going to, am I going to dance, am I going to run, am I going to whatever, fall on my knees? Same thing's true when he, when he shows up here. It's just like, you've got to do something. You're either going to fall on your face, you're going to run, you're going to run the aisles, you're going to jump and shout, you're going to do something when God shows up. And, and um, so, I, Cheryl, I, now I'm, I'm going somewhere with all of this, not just go down memory lane, but I want to close with this. Um, as you saw, seeing the picture, um, I used to sit over here, and I remember um, one revival night, I should say this, uh, I didn't preach the services uh, other than Sunday morning. First year, we had Jesse Norwood, a black evangelist from Chicago. Um, Jesse came and, and uh, preached those messages for us. Then the last six months, uh, Steve Smith, uh, he and his, his family uh, parked a trailer over here and lived in it and, and uh, preached those last six months with us. But uh, it was in those last, somewhere in those last six months, I remember sitting there while God is moving, and I heard God say this to me. He said, um, you will see revival twins. Amen. And you'll see revival twins. And at the time, I had no idea um, about what that would be, because I thought maybe something was going to refire here at, at that point in time, and it didn't. And, but I've never forgotten that word about that I would see a revival twin. And so as when Pastor Arnold asked me some weeks back if I would, would come and share a message today and be like, okay, what do you want me to say? That all rose back up inside of me again. And so I want to this morning, in, in just a moment, pray for Pastor Arnold and for Jana here this morning, because I believe I'm here to release that. Um, I, I have, since that time, I keep having visions here, about here, and one of them that I keep seeing is the power of God is so strong that when they open the doors, to the lobby to come in, they fall and just fall out. And that people are dragging bodies away from, from the door. Because his presence is so strong in this place. Um, <clears throat> I believe it will be a twin, but it won't be the same. And, and so before we, I pray for you and, and for Pastor Arnold and Jana and have Nina will, will join me. I want to say this. I am not saying this to declare it's going to happen. All right, I'm not. So let's 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 take this off the plate. This is not now to put you in a place of that. Oh, we, now we got to now we. <laughs> listen, listen. In the name of Jesus, you shall not birth an Ishmael. Ishmael. In other words, you shall not make something happen out of God's time. Just because I'm saying to you. I've seen that in my spirit, and I heard that word in my spirit. None of that means that it will ever happen. I'm just, as a human being, telling you that's what I heard, and that's what I saw. The rest is in God's hands. All right? So, there is, so if there, there is no pressure, there's no stress, there's no... It's got to happen. In the name of Jesus, you are free. Pastor Arnold and Janet, you are free. In this... this see... I had, when, whenever I led the congregation through that process, I didn't have a, a game plan. You know, I, I didn't know what was coming, and blah, blah, blah. We were just doing what God had called us to do. And all, that's, I'm, I'm losing things here. Pastor, I'm going to get me refastened. Right. Oh, here. I think I can get reattached. All right, am I back? All right. Do um, you catch what I'm saying? But in, in so I, I'm, in, I'm bringing this to encourage you in a possibility. It is possible 
that he may show back up again in powerful ways in this place. Now, does that mean that what happens in the interim period is, is a minor detail? Absolutely not. It means that he is already a powerful God. He's already anointed you. He's already called you. He's already placed you. He's already destined you. You walk in it. You already have it in you to have an incredible impact on Hutchinson in the, in the region. This is not saying, okay, let's wait until he comes and now. You, all right, you, can't, you gotta hear my heart here on this thing this morning. I've been a pastor long enough to know what all the, the pitfalls are about saying these kinds of things. So this is, this is about stay the course. Man, I am so impressed with your course. I really am. I'm so impressed with, with what I see and what I hear about what you're doing and what, what God is doing among you. Now, I've already loved Pastor Arnold. I, I believe there's something here about that that he's wanting to do. I don't believe there's any kind of accidents that are going on uh, in this place. And I'm, I'm excited for you. And so this morning, all right, did you catch all that? You kind of got the context, you know? All right, so I... I